hello hello and welcome to my channel if you are new here my name is Nogwazi Ndombela also known as Gwazi Bear on all social media platforms do subscribe be a part of this family and if you're returning Sabi welcome back another day another dollar a son the silver boner <laughs> we're back with another update on the Senzo May you were trial and today I'm just gonna be updating you guys on the proceedings on Wednesday um the 24th of january thursday the 25th of january and today which is friday the 26th of january so let's get right into this video and i'm bad like the barbie i'm a dog but i still want to party being felt like i'm ready to bend i'm a 10 so i pull in a 10 like daddy Okay, the last time I updated you guys, we spoke about the proceedings on Tuesday um, where the cross-examination of Gininda, the investigating officer of this case, was still under cross-examination by um, defense counsel for accused number one and two, Umgome Zulu. Um, on Wednesday, we continued with this cross-examination and there was a statement which was read in court, a statement by Gininda himself and in the statement basically we got a little insight into what the confessions of accused number one and two um had in it yeah, well, what was in the statements basically um okay so the first thing um is that accused number two implicated um all of the accused which are before the courts and also surprisingly or to our surprise implicated miss kelly kumalo the then girlfriend of senzo mehiwa as the mastermind of this whole entire case now on wednesday the internet went a buzz when this information um was read out in court because um it basically says that ndanzi was um sent or the whole group was basically sent by um kelly kumado to kill senzo Meiwa, and it was indeed a hit after that came to light um a question that ngome zulu had and remember how i emphasized the fact that ngome zulu was really sticking or really questioning a lot about the j50s which was the warrant of arrest for all the accused so now when this information came out that kelly kumado was involved as the mastermind the question that everyone had is why wasn't she arrested now according to the statement by Kininda, kelly kumado's j50 warrant of arrest was included in this statement however was not signed which is another thing that raises a bit of eyebrows for us um but that was the case okay now into thursday's proceedings on thursday we learned um in court that there is a video that um Mgome Zulu had seen on social media tiktok which is from the proceedings of the first appearance of all the accused and basically um this video is said to um, have proof that the accused fired um, accused number two fired his attorney during proceedings now there was a back and forth a debate in court with regards to this evidence because the judge wanted um, arguments basically to say can this be used in court the agreement that they all came to is that they would um Ngome Zulu would make an application to the SABC to get the footage from the proceedings and that today which is Friday all the defense attorneys would come with their arguments and then the judge would then decide whether to use um this evidence or to hear this evidence in court um so a decision was taken that um court adjourns yesterday and that Baloyi would get the records of these proceedings so that they would be played in court. Um, so we summarize the day, basically just talking about those proceedings. Baloyi would, ha um, would make arrangements for those to be available today, which is Friday. But another interesting, very interesting point that came about in court yesterday is that Ndanzi's version is that Kininda bribed him. 
um, with 3 million rand in order for him to confess. Now, this comes after he had made his um, original statement. So, Keninda Kaninda questioned this and denied it and says um, he did not have the budget, first of all, to make those kind of bribes. And not only that, um, why would he need to bribe him when he had already made his confession? Now, my thing is with this, just my personal opinion, obviously because Ndanzi had made two statements, if you remember, Ndanzi made two statements in this case. The first statement that he made or confession that he made was before Urapadu, um, which is a justice of peace or peace officer. So he made that statement and then um, he went on to make another confession with Magistrate Kronia, which was on the 24th of June um, 2020. Now, this bribe that Ndanzi is referring to um, took place allegedly before he had to go to Magistrate Kronia. I'm not saying it's true, but I'm saying it's possible that could that could have happened in order for him to be able to confess in front of the magistrate. Now, let us go into the proceedings for today. So um, it has become like a norm that court starts late, but today it was apparently because um, accused number three, four, and five had a meeting um, at their prisons with regards to their dietary needs. So they did arrive late in court. However, when they did arrive, we went back into the issue of the recordings. Now, Baloy addresses the court and tells us that um he was unable to get video footage however he does have the audio of the proceedings and so those were then played in court so we spent the whole day today in court listening to the proceedings and um before that i got the opportunity or i took the time to actually yesterday after this whole conversation of the recordings um happened i took the time to go onto youtube and actually look up the first appearance of these accused and i came to the realization that the video that mgome zulu was referring to was actually not from the first appearance however it was from the second appearance um of the accused so basically in this video um, Undanzi, who is accused number two, is saying he does not want his lawyer because his lawyer wants him to plead guilty to a charge that he did not commit or to an offense that he did not commit. And he says that is why his lawyer has run away. So when I looked at these videos, I went through all three of the videos. There is one for the 27th of October, whereby that was the first appearance. And at this appearance, it is very clear that Danzi was represented. And I put this in inverted commas because his version is that this lawyer he did not appoint him himself he was given this lawyer so on the 27th of October indeed this Mchiyako character that they keep referring to as Ndanzi's lawyer was indeed there he did represent him um, to the extent whereby when the magistrate asked if he would be applying for bail for his clients his answer was no so that was the first proceedings on the 27th of October. Um, Giaco says, no, he won't be applying for bail at the moment for his client. He still needs to consult with him, and yada, 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 yada. Those proceedings were then postponed to the 27th of November. Now, on the 27th of November, um, we see Undandi clearly trying to address the court. And when he raises his hand to address the court, the magistrate says, um, he should talk through his lawyer. And at this point, I feel that Danzi wanted to communicate to the court that he does not want this lawyer, but the magistrate was just not having it, right? And then on the 5th of March, then the proceedings there, Mchiyako is no longer there. Mchiyako is no longer there, and that's where we hear Danzi saying, I, um, my lawyer wants me to plead guilty to a, a case that I, 
or a charge that I never um, did and now he has basically run away and so therefore I will take the legal aid lawyer. So this was all played out in court today and um, Baloyi will then get the video version of this. However, everything played out that way in court and we cannot wait for Monday whereby we will then um, find out what the decision will be with regards to what has been heard in court. So those were the proceedings for the past three days. It is fire in court, like 10 past four. You get what I'm saying, right? Um, so the proceedings are very interesting. Um, and it seems like we're getting closer and closer and closer to the end of the trial within the trial But it is really taking very very long So it will be interesting to see what will happen next week and hopefully um, We'll be able to continue with the cross-examination by advocate Nisi who is the defense for accused number three and Yeah, so the case is postponed until Tuesday next week So I will see you guys probably on Friday when I get you an update of the whole week. Have a good weekend. Bye.